And we are back, 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 back this week, 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 week with show cat, 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 casual T to T to T T T. We are back, back, back. Back, back this week, 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 week with your cat, 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 casual T D D D D D D D D. Yes, we are back <laughs> this week with your casual T. Um, you know when Aman and I do the casual T, some weeks the T overfloweth, and some weeks the T is given very much desert terrain. But this week, the T <laughs> or the last couple of weeks have been overflowing. So let's welcome back to the podcast, the baby boy Aman. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hi, Bryce. This is so weird. Like I've never been on a, a video podcast with you before, but it also I... feels very natural as well. I'm kind of so shocked that we haven't done it yet, but yes. I'm excited. We keep talking about it. So we say, you know what? Let's let's pull the cord and turn the light on. So if you are listening to this week's Casual Tea, you can also head over to the Bryce Isaiah YouTube page. And yeah, uh, you can views, baby. Okay, follow along on this audio podcast with the video. So hit subscribe, write a review, and uh, give. let us know in the comments what you think. Now let's also welcome to the first time Aman and I are having a guest on the casual tea. And of course, if you can guess it already, we didn't welcome the baby boy hailing from Ghost Island, hailing yeah. from HGTV, <laughs> hailing yeah. from the Wendell Holling YouTube page, and also hailing from Edge of Extinction because he definitely was the first boot on Winners at War. <laughs> Wendell, welcome to the Casual <laughs> Tea. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I don't know if I was the first boot on Winners at War, but uh, thank you for uh, inviting me, gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's an honor and a ple pleasure. Yay. Boom. 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 Damn. Well, I got my whistle just in case Bryce acts up. The no. whistle is on the ready. Well, listen, uh, we are excited for you to join us with the casual tea. The casual tea is something that, like, honestly was created with Aman and I when, you know, we wanted to talk about Big Brother. But, you know, I didn't really want the the necessarily the long winded, you know, day to day of Big Brother. And mm -hmm. from there, Aman and I were like, we love the casual tea. And, you know, here on the Purple Pants podcast, we love to talk about topics that are that sometimes people shy away from. Uh, and Aman and I always like to just enter each topic with respect, uh, with openness, and, you know, sharing our honest opinions on different topics that people normally will shy away from. So, uh, you know, that is the inception of the casual tea. And, you know, the casual tea is damn near approaching two years. You know, our, our child is two, oh my, my God. mind. Oh, my God. I still can't believe it. I feel like everything that I got started in the pandemic does it just doesn't feel like it's been that long because i swear 2020 and 2021 were not real years like mm. i like i <laughs> i feel like they just it was just a blur of madness so that the fact that it's been two years at this point is just really blowing my mind going on three because it's about to be 2023 like what the hell oh, and they were talking about you know quarantine for two weeks and it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow. What a yeah. That was that was <laughs> three years later. Three years later. Okay. And now it's more viruses. More thi like yeah. it's like three years later. Three shots later. More viruses mm. coming out the ass. Like mm. China didn't. It's just. It's a lot. It's a mm. lot. It definitely is a lot. But also, before we always kick off the casual teas, Amal, we always love to know what you've been up to. What's what's the tea with you? Are you still on your Renaissance uh, escapade? Mm -hmm. And also, I have a clarification for the last time that we talked. I kept saying it was beyond. And mind you, I'm not trying to go down this road with you. But when we were talking, you were saying that Renaissance was your top Beyonce album. And I kept saying yes. it was the self-entitled Beyonce album that was mine. I have uh, a correction. What was it called? It was Dangerously in Love. Her Dangerously first album love. for me was the main, my main album. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I am still, uh, I'm still feeling it, baby. Like, okay. I know a lot of people are so, um, pressed about these visuals and I, I i'm a little bit too i'm like I'm, I'm, it's it's a it's a bit of a peculiar rollout like i don't think we've ever really well, seen I, something like this from her but i'm still very much in well when my... it, when this is something that we have seen from her outside of dangerously in love though after dangerously in love she just went off the playbook 
I mean, no, I feel like Dangerously in Love was traditional. Uh, B Day was traditional. It wasn't. The fans wasn't happy. The fans were not happy with Deja Vu. They were like boycotting and saying they wanted a new video for it. And then they were like, so, I mean, maybe you're right for. But Deja I mean, but I feel like, I feel like, like, just like in general, the way that she rolled out the era in the album was still very much you got your lead single, you got your music videos, then you got your second single, then you got your. Second music video, like I feel like it was very, you know, she played the system the way that it should be played. And then when self title came out, that's wow. when she kind of just went crazy and was just like, no promo, let me drop it. And then Lemonade was kind of like a similar fashion. And now Renaissance is like, let's take it. We're getting traditional. We got a we got a lead single. Then we get the album, but no music videos, no, nothing. She has been radio silent since the release. And I'm like, what you doing, girl? But I'm loving it. I love the fact that we're just focusing all on. The music the and music. like Page Sick is already reporting that she's going to be touring next summer. So I'm 2023. like, 2023. Listen, when I tell y'all not to invite everybody into my purse or anything, but when I tell y'all <laughs> that I have already stashed away $1,000 oh. $1, for this oh. concert. <laughs> Well, so here's no the game. thing: like I, I ain't stashing away a thousand. But I mean, Beyonce, <laughs> Beyonce could get a good three hundred from me. I do not need to be on the floor. Well, I've never like, seen her before, so this uh, is my first. Oh my god, that's right. Yeah, it's my first time, and who knows if she'll ever tour again after this? Like, Mama's well, getting up there. And she's not old or anything. She's forty one, but you know, like pop star me. years. We're that's... getting. We, we're going to have to get a Destiny Shout album and tour as well. So. Hey, if it happens, it happens. I'm just saying, you just never, you just never know it. You just never know, especially with like. That one <laughs> Go ahead, Amon. Especially with what? You know, just like the world is crazy. There's viruses everywhere. Like I would not blame artists for being like, you know what? I think I'm a chill. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I'm done. So, I just, you know, I just, I just decided like, if this is the first and last time that I see her, I just want to kind of go all out for it, you know. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We will be at the Philly show together. We might not be sitting together, but we will find each other. Uh, Wendell, will you be attending the? Be Have you attended a Beyonce concert before, Wendell? Yes. Which one? <laughs> not you not remembering what i don't oh even know if he's God. lying or not have you ever attended a beyond it's okay yeah i have let me hold on let me sit my casual table. beyonce or destiny's child well first of first of all i'm i don't even like to add clarification okay <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm just saying I'm i've just seen saying. destiny's child twice i've seen beyonce as a solo artist i think five times oh my god mm. so, yeah, no wonder you're not going to be. Because I went on her first, first tour in Dangerously in Love when it was Missy Elliott, Beyonce. And I forget who are the, I forget who was the other person, but I, it was like Missy Elliott and Beyonce were co-headlining. And wow. I remember like I was in like, I was in high school and I had to catch the bus downtown. It was me and my friend Giselle. We got to our seats and we're in our seats and Matthew Knows walks by. And I was like, oh my God, Giselle, that's Matthew Knows. Child, I ran right up to him. I was like, hey, Matthew Knows, my name is Bryce. And he was just like, nice to meet you. I hope you're here to enjoy the show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Now you meeting Beyonce daddy. That's crazy. Yes. And it was like I it was another artist. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Missy or somebody, but if it was Missy Elliott, like on her set, she had a lot of like, you know, ladies in bikinis and like, you know, and I remember mm -hmm. after I said hi to Matthew, this other lady behind me was just like, you know, I thought this was a kid-friendly show. I brought my <laughs> daughter here. And I was just like, girl, but that's my man. You know the spirits. But anyway, back to you, Wendell. What is what was your first Beyonce? Uh... Oh, you still wanted to know because you just <laughs> like hijacked uh, that conversation. Sorry, it's the casual tea. You gotta, you know, I we going to roll with here. the punches. I went to the best one. Lemonade on the run right. tour. Yes. Okay. Uh, the okay. joint tour. Yeah. Okay. Well, ho. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. okay. What, yeah. what where what what city did you see it in? In Philly. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What All was right. that at the well, I think it was either at the Eagles Stadium or the Wells Fargo. One I think it was Wells, Wells Fargo. It Wells was Fargo. the on the on the run tour was not at Wells Fargo. The on the or run was it Lincoln tour, Financial? It was it was whatever the one it was outside yeah. where yes, because that's yeah, I definitely seen it. So I'm just mm -hmm. you know. Um and then just in this vein of Beyonce, since Amon is like on the Renaissance train. Do, do you have a, a favorite Beyonce album? Because it, here's the thing, though. Wendell knows songs. I'll give this to him. Like, he knows a lot of songs that I feel like I'm surprised that he knows. Because mm -hmm. 
We travel because you know we're currently on tour, the Bryson Went Present Ooh. Tour. Okay. Yes. Coming Ooh. to a city near you. Um, can't stop, won't stop. Um, and you know, if I am forced to drive them on, my, oh my yes. <laughs> I have you control full, the ox. I have full control of the ox. And let me just say, it is like my playlist is like. 13 year old gay 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 Bryce okay like it just crosses over so many genres and I'm always surprised as to like when I think you know nobody gonna notice when they'll be in the back singing the hooks I'll be like okay as you should as you should Wendell knows good music so before we get to this casual tea we do want to know like what are some of your favorite Beyonce albums Dangerously in Love Oh, the first album. I yeah. okay. Now let's just go a little deeper. What name a song that's not the lead single on the album that you like? That's my song, "Dangerously in Love." Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a good mm -hmm. one. It brings me back. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Him in love with you. you <laughs> now here's the thing. This is what I now. I'll, this Wait a minute. Oh. I mm -hmm. might stand corrected. I oh. might be self-correcting right now. Yeah, are you? Because what was the one? We be all night. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay, that was not dangerously. Four, <laughs> that four was, albums okay. later. Four <laughs> albums <laughs> later, and ten years later, actually. A decade a whole later. <laughs> That's my song. <laughs> oh. title: Ooh. Drunk in Love. Oh. Yeah, Drunk in Love. That's my mm -hmm. song. Yes, that's my album, and that's my song. I stand corrected. Okay. I'm a truth seeker and teller out here, so okay. even well, if I'm even if I'm checking myself. All right. Well, we appreciate it. Well, listen, we got some hot uh, tea bags and topics to talk oh. about, <laughs> so <laughs> let's get right into it. Um, originally, this uh, topic was really about Little Mermaid. You know, Holly. What's the last name of mine? Because you know Bailey. Bailey. Uh, we don't. You know, because I was that's where that's the Holly I was going to, and they dragged uh, her too. That was so crazy when the with the news dropped that she was getting cast, and everybody mm -hmm. thought that it was Holly Berry, and Holly Berry was like, "Bitch, I'm not in this. <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> leave me out of this." But we've known for about two and a half years uh, regarding Holly uh, going to be the Little Mermaid, um, and even if you know Chloe and Holly, you know we've watched them. Chloe has come out with her music. You know, there's been criticism about that, but baby, I was not ready. First of all, I've been excited for. Little Mermaid is coming out 2023. Disney, they dropped the trailer on YouTube. It got mm -hmm. over 10 million views within three days. However, mm -hmm. the Disney YouTube account had to suspend the comments due to the feedback uh, of the people... Not knowing how to act. Not knowing how to act, essentially. And it just kind of sort of caught me by surprise. Now, mind you, I didn't think it would necessarily be a thing. But then, you know me, I had to go to Twitter. I went to Twitter and Bay Bay, the Twitter comments were Twittering. And to my dismay, it it's just not only Little Mermaid. The Lord of the Rings, the prequel that's out now, has casted more black characters. We know in the House of Dragon, we know the whole Targaryen family um, is, not Targaryen, the... Uh, Vesepi, the the Valerian family is black and people are not here for it. And I am just, I don't know. I just am shocked. And mm. it honestly reminds me of when we did the Survivor uh, diversity campaign. And then when we got the first season of 41 and how so many people were like, oh my God, I can't do this. It's the woke culture. It's the woke culture. And for me, what I find so funny was there was one particular former Survivor who will remain nameless that was like, I'm not watching Survivor anymore. It's done. I'm done. And I just happened to go on, like, you know, when I was logging on to check my YouTube, one, one of their videos happened to kind of sort of pop up in my For You page because I don't subscribe. And I was just like, ooh, not episode one of 43, uh, them breaking it down. I said, now, hmm, uh, <laughs> I thought you was done. Interesting. I feel like but, I know who you might be talking uh, about. Yeah, it's a uh, child date. Listen, anyway, but I just, it, what, it, for the life of me, it baffles me. Um, we see more representation. We 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 see people that look like us. We see people that our nieces, nephews, cousins, mothers, sisters mm -hmm. can look up to. And it is always just met with this 
this hate and and this like this can't be and like people are like this is ruined my little I, now child you know i went to twitter okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the tweets was like and me as a white person who am i supposed to look up to now i said <laughs> what in the world and I, I i i just there was this also uh a huge tiktoker i forget the guy's name but child he put on blackface and was like Mommy, the little mermaid came in there looks like me. Like they were just having a field day. And I just over fictional characters. And it's so it's so ridiculous. I, I, there, there's I, a lot I, here. I, um I, when, whenever there's whenever there is some kind of progress historically, um racial progress, it's always met with some kind of backlash. Think think of President Obama. Like mm -hmm. The amount of uh, hatred that was spewed at him was unprecedented at the time. Um, and they responded by electing that person after him. Um, mm -hmm. And in this case, it's like we're thinking of fictional, fantastical, made up fiction. worlds. <laughs> and fictional. fiction <laughs> is it's imaginative. And if, if you guys can't envision. Ah. Black people or any there could be blue people and purple people in these fictional places, you know, but mm -hmm. if you can't envision a black person in these roles, it, it says a lot. But um, when we see this again, it's it's in response to progress being made. So I think I think my takeaway is this is great that we have Chloe in this position and all these little black girls and black children and just children to see a main, just people to see a prominent main black figure. I think, I think it's a good thing. And there will always be ridiculous hate by ignorant people. And the thing for me is like, it's not erasure. Like you can still watch the animated version. If there are, if there are some beautiful little redheaded girls out there, first of all, Chloe is still going to have red hair in the movie. Oh, oh spoiler <laughs> alert. The red hair is oh. there. And they told y'all that from jump, okay? It was like, and I thought, the reason why I was just like so over it when this happened, because like, when they announced it a couple years back, we already went through this. Like, we went through it. Like, and I, I feel like Disney did that on purpose. They were like, we know this is going to get some shit. So let, some let's get it out early. Get now. Get let's ahead of it. Say it now so everybody can get their little hatred thing pieces out of the way. But no, as soon as that trailer dropped, it was like, it was like bedlam in these streets. So many people going to the ends of the earth to justify all of their ridiculous. We, oh, well, if you want to be realistic, then it shouldn't be somebody black because translucent skin and living under. It's a mermaid. Mm. Oh, my mm. God. It's a mermaid. There is a the sea witch with eight legs that steals mm. her voice with a, with, a, with a shell. There is a singing crab. There is a, all the fish are talking. Mm. Okay. She has. Many, many sisters. Okay. Okay. It's, well, it's, no, it's, no, let, let, let's talk, first of all, I forgot she has seven sisters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And listen, more recently, I've been getting into TikTok. And first of all, I be living for TikTok at times. Uh, you know, one of her sisters is supposed to represent like the Black Sea. Uh, and uh, Ariel represents the Red Sea. So let's just take a listen for that. The Red mm. Sea that come on, borders. Now, you know, you, come on, Egypt, I know you're a little more. Okay. Mm. That borders Sudan. That mm. borders Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Well, what mm -hmm. color should she be then? I'm just it's... asking for a friend that know a mermaid, that know a talking fish. <laughs> mm. It's so ridiculous. And I'm just, you know, I've, I'm really trying to just like pay these haters dust because. It, the movie's gonna come out. It already filmed. They already everybody got paid. Everybody went home. Okay, they're just waiting on us to see it, and I'm gonna be seeing it. I, oh, I, I like I I, I. I am very much a a child of the '90s. I am a, a Disney. I grew up on Disney. Uh, freaking Little Mermaid is uh, one of the movies that I had on VHS that I abused the hell out of. Like that VHS is destroyed. I watched it so many times. She is my all time favorite Disney princess. So 
and I have no problem enjoying. It's that the thing for me that really burns my ass is that I have like black people are consistently able to enjoy the things that we do not see ourselves in. Like I still I love the animated classic, and I'm I'm fairly certain with the way that Disney has been going with these live action remakes that this live action remake is probably not going to be as good as the animated version. Let's just be real. Only a few of them have really. I would say Aladdin is kind of good. I would say the Jungle Book was really good. And maybe Beauty and the Beast, but really, most of the animated classics are still way better than these remakes. So, if I'm being honest, I'm probably still going to like the animated classic much better. But I'm still going to love the fact that I know that Chloe is going to sing down. Right. I know that she's going to act this down. She's probably going to be right. the best thing about this movie. So, I'm just like, I'm I'm just so happy that she's in it. And I'm I, I, she 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 got the part because she was the best person for the job. The director then said it like ten thousand times. Like as soon as he heard her sing, it was over. It was a wrap. Mm. It was a wrap. Okay, so have there been any legitimate criticisms? Uh, n- no, honestly, in my opinion, no. I, I other than no, not yet. Right. Well, wait, are you talking about her being black or just the criticisms of the her actual? being black? Uh, I, I, I mean, the, the translucent skin, the red hair, the this and that, the like these fictional characters. But so, no, no legitimate other than like hate, in my opinion. And again, it's a mermaid. <laughs> OK, so when somebody actually shows me a mermaid. <laughs> then, like, I feel like, you know, maybe we can be the first podcast to get a mermaid on them. Yeah. Now, tell me if I'm going a little too deep, but like uh, off of the back of what Amon was saying is that like it's so hard for other people to accept when these these fictional roles or uh, seeing a black person in lead. Um and I just question now y'all know I, I ain't scared to go there. Can we talk Jesus Christ for a second? If y'all are mad at a mermaid, if y'all are mad at a mermaid, I just you know, and for and for those devout Christians out there um, that you know love to stick to, y'all love to read the text, y'all love to tell me I'm going to hell, y'all love to tell me all of this stuff. I'm just curious to know, like, where in that Bible Jesus had blue hair? I mean, blue eyes and blonde hair. I <laughs> turned into uh, a mermaid. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, so y'all good with whitewashing over Jesus in the Bible, who said that his his hair was woolly, woolly. Mm-hmm. His skin was olive. Mm-hmm. But y'all good with that? Mm-hmm. I, I, it's just. I want to like uh, Whoopi Goldberg has talked oh. about this many times, and one of the things that I've always found so powerful about her career is that she was one of I think she she was the first black woman in was it Star Trek, mm, and yeah. up until then there weren't there there weren't any other black people in these uh in these like sci fi type shows, and she said it was just such a powerful and special moment because. It just was like, okay, black people will exist in the future too. So like, why are we acting as if it's just this homogenous thing of all white people? Why can't there be people of all kinds of colors in these in these fictional, fantastical worlds? Like we enter these types of spaces to escape the real world. I mean, it's, it's like, and it's the same thing with, I just watched the uh, the, the ABC 2020 special on um, Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella with Brandy. It was the same thing. It was like... Mm-hmm. Everyone loves that film, and it's so and it's such a diverse cast. You got a a black Cinderella with an Asian, Asian. prince, a white king, mm. black queen, white stepmother, black stepsister, white stepsister. Like Whitney it did not Houston. matter. It di- Whitney. Oh my God, mm. Whitney Houston. It just it just didn't matter. It didn't matter, and it was such a beautiful message and a beautiful film. And the same thing can happen with this one. I just people just ugh, I don't know. A piece of me is like, is some of this just like manufactured outrage culture? Like, is there like just media outlets that are like ramping up these stories just because they want the engagement and they know that people are going to get pissed off and click on the article and all of that? And I, and I, a piece of me hopes that it's more of that and not actual idiots online that are like, well, the, the, her skin color. Like, how old are we? It's 2022. And, and my thing is, Please it's the adults. This. Put the movie on, let the baby see it, and let's get the baby's and reaction. Don't they care. don't care. Mm. 
It's about the representation. It's about them seeing this. It's about like we can go on and on the list with LGBTQ plus, with trans, with Asians, with women in general. Like, put it in front of the child. Expose them to it. That's that. It, it, uh, can I play but, devil's advocate? Go ahead. This is hard to play devil's advocate. Um, the one. So I was trying to read through some of these comments. Thanks for ruining my favorite princess. She doesn't look physically like Ariel. She may be your Ariel, but she's not my Ariel. Mm. Then I saw one, and I don't, I don't watch too many um, of these Disney movies, but mm -hmm. I saw one that said, could you imagine the uproar if they cast a white girl to be Tiana? So, but, okay. Let's talk so, about that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about why Tiana was made. Mm. So, like, I think that that's where we need to start. What? It's the most dumb. It's I, the dumbest I, I, freaking I, argument. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's like why? If, if, if being black is, is essential to Tiana's character, I mean, it's that's but the like, whole point. She is an African American woman that's growing up in New Orleans in the 1920s. Okay, it's literally supposed to be a rag to riches story. It would not make sense if she were white. It wouldn't right. make sense. That's like saying, oh well, what if they? went ahead and did a colorblind casting of Hairspray the Musical. The race is such an important part of racism mm. and the 1950s and segregation is a huge plot point to Hairspray. It would not make sense if they made a whitewashed cast. Then you don't have a story. So once again, fictional yeah. character. Mm. Race has nothing to do with anybody's upbringing in The Little Mermaid. Mm. The Little Mermaid, like mermaids probably don't even have a race. They're just mermaids. Okay, they don't even they probably don't even see that shit down there. So enough with these. Well, if they cast the Tiana, no, if anybody cast a white Tiana, run because there's something <laughs> seriously wrong with whoever did it. Okay, and that's just it. Just is what it is. It just is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Great well, answer, Armand. Great yeah. answer. Yes. And, and regardless, I just like for me, I, I just feel so sad for Haley. Like. Can you imagine, like, you know, this, like, this is supposed to be your debut role. You're supposed to be, like, it's the start of your career, which is the reason why you have not put out music. Re reason why your sister has been putting out music is this is supposed to launch your career. And from this, you're going to go on. And it's like, she'll forever have to remember this. Um, and I'm sure she's going to go on to do greatness. But it just, for me, it just saddens that, like, you you have to go through this uh, because this is the time in which that we live in. Uh, but... Either way, I'm taking my nieces, my nephews, my goddaughters. Yes. We're going to go see this, okay? We're going to go out in droves, and we're going to support this. When and does again, it come out? It comes out in, like, June 2023. I think okay. it's May. May. Okay. May 23rd, something like we'll that? We'll bring the kids. Oh, my God. Today, oh, my God. <laughs> I've been waiting. As soon as they announced this, I was so – I could not believe it. I still can't believe it. It's kind of and, – and they have Yara Shahidi from Blackest. Mm. She will be wow. – Tinkerbell in the near oh. future. So I'm already like, they, if you mad about this, y'all might as well get used to it now because it's just gonna keep happening. <laughs> Amon, did you put a hundred dollars aside for this? <laughs> I, I didn't, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll, you know, go and get some little merch or something. <laughs> you know, maybe bring a little bottle or something. Ah. Into the theater. Now that's what they need to be protesting: the drunk uh, Amon <laughs> singing in the theater. Excuse me, sir. My daughter is trying to watch. I'm so like, look, I, yeah, I I went to Disney World a few years back, and I was like one of the I, in Magic Kingdom. They have what's called Ariel's Grotto, where you can walk in and get a picture with Ariel. And I was like the only <laughs> grown man in this line. <laughs> all these little girls just like waiting in line, and all of them were like looking at me. Their moms were looking at me like, "What is like?" I was like, leave me alone, okay? <laughs> okay. Look at this fist. <laughs> Isn't it neat? <laughs> yes, Wouldn't I... it be fresh if it connects with ah, your teeth? <laughs> like... Not the babies, Amon. Not the babies. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So we'll wrap that up. And so next on The Casual Tea, we are taking it to Iran. And this is something that I've always... We've heard stories about like these uh, Islamic cultures um, and these Arab cultures in regarding to like the treatment of women and just a lot of different things. And I always I don't like to necessarily have topics on other people's religions because I 
in no way, shape, or form uh, do I ever want to disrespect uh, anyone's religion. But I have read and seen enough uh, to know that a lot of these religions do not give um, a lot of empowerment to women. Um, they don't have a lot of rights. There are, I've, I've read and, and heard of horrific stories, but this also comes from, I believe it was like maybe last week where a 22 year old uh, woman, uh, Irani woman was taken into custody by police because she was not properly wearing her hijabi and they took her in hijab. and hijab um, and they took her in and they, uh, allegedly, she had to go through re-education training. Uh, oh my God. That, that's, that, that's a protocol. That's what they do. And while she was in custody, uh, she ends up dead. Now, this is a story that us as Americans, we know all too well. And I'm sure they know as well what goes on. And so from there has sparked outrage has sparked demonstrations have sparked protest uh regarding the treatment of women in this country regarding these laws that are not to support or for women and they are coming out and this is the one thing that i just have to say that i feel like when we talk about the protests that we've seen in this country um and even other countries is that like this younger generation I be so for how they do not stand for this old like rule. And so for me, I support yeah. it. Um, I think that it, it, it is long overdue and I'm all for women's right. Women's rights is human rights. And so I, I definitely, again, I know that in this religion, it is, it's written in that way, but I also know in the religion that I am in, you know, it is written a certain way about how I'm supposed to live my life, and I don't subscribe to that, but I am a, a spiritual and religious person, so, like, I can understand where they are coming from, and I, for me, I support it, and I just love to see it, and I love, why do we have to subscribe to these things that do not support us, are not here for us, like, just because it was done a hundred and twenty, like it doesn't mean that in 2022, like we have to subscribe to that. Like, and I again, yeah, whatever mm -hmm. your religion is, whatever it is, but you, you should be able to do what you want with your body and still be able to praise and be a part of the religion that you are. So, I just I'm curious to hear thoughts. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, I, I, I echo you. I think it's um, it's kind of similar to what, to what uh, um. Uh, Wenda was talking about earlier in that, you know, whenever there's some type of like progress that's made, there is a pushback. And I think, I, I think what's like, especially insidious about this situation is the fact that they are cutting the internet access mm. because they don't want, they don't want information to spread throughout the rest of the country. They don't want information to spread throughout the rest of the world because then they have to deal with the, the rest of the world already putting pressure. I mean, we, America likes to involve themselves in a lot of things. Um, and so I think the last thing that they need is a bunch of Americans being like, oh, this is some effed up. Maybe we need to send some resources over there. It's um like, look, yeah, like religious fervor is one of the strongest chokeholds that <laughs> humanity has ever had to deal with. And like you said, when you have thousands of years of women being forced to behave in a certain way and finally there is a contingent and a new generation that's like mm, i don't know about that the the the, the biggest like the, the the knee jerk reaction is to be like oh this is this is evil that means that you're evil if you if you don't agree with this religion if you don't agree with this line of thinking if you don't agree with wearing the hijab that means that you are morally corrupt you are the one that's wrong here you need to be punished you need to die you need to do this you need to do that um instead of maybe examining the religion and being like hmm maybe this doesn't work 1000 years later I, maybe I, we need to revisit some of these practices not you know abandon it. i'm not saying you need to give up large portions of your culture but maybe there is a way that you can progress that doesn't involve killing protesters because mm. i feel like that's also not something mm. that you should be doing so yeah yeah i i so her name is masa amini first of all yes um, say her name say her name and she was arrested and three years later killed or 
died in custody. And like Bryce said, we we as black people in America, we know this all too well. Mm-hmm. And like the stories that someone committed suicide while in custody or whatever. Mm-hmm. We see it so much. And in this case, it is a matter of like bodily autonomy and these hijabs that women are forced to wear. Um, women don't want to wear women don't want to wear them or certain women don't want to wear them. And I should not be able to force a woman to wear something. Mm. And, and I also think that the government government shouldn't be able to force a woman to wear something. Now, in our case, during the pandemic, I think forcing everyone to wear masks was a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. But in the case of like forcing women to cover their bodies if women don't want to do that, I don't think that they should be forced to. And what what we saw with the protests and people removing their hijabs and people, women cutting their hair and doing all these things that can lead to them being killed. It's a, it's a tremendous act of strength and resistance. I yeah. think I read that up that like 50 people, 50 protesters have been killed already mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just one of these things that in America, like you said, America does like to try to police a lot of other countries and sometimes Mm -hmm. maybe not, not always Brown countries, not always cut or, or black or Brown countries. Mm -hmm. But in this case, that that's such, that's such a, like we're watching it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can, how can you not say something? But, Mm -hmm. But let Russia want to go over there for some oil. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. we the first ones to speak up. And again, this is not the first time that, you know, the U.S. has watched, dare I say, the Holocaust. Like, we've watched something happen before we had a moral response to it. And again, it's like, I just, I feel like we stick our necks out for so much other stuff. But then when stuff like this happens, it's like, we take a, how shall we respond Re- reaction to it and mm-hmm. it's just kind of it, it's crazy to me and especially like you know in this time in this country where you know roe versus wade you know her body her right and i think of now the head covering that the women are they have to wear and you look at some of the you look at the root of which it is for and why they are supposed to wear it. And a part of it is so that they are not sexualized by other men. Right. So they got to cover their selves because, because men's it, it desi- a, man, a man's desire. And so it's just like, when you just even think the fact that a part of that is it, just, you're putting the burden mm. you're put the the man's issue mm. of their desires you're now putting that burden on the women to cover up very similar in my opinion to we've seen it before uh in rape cases where people then question well you had a short skirt on what did you think yep. wearing a short skirt like excuse me mm-hmm. excuse the like i should be able to walk around naked outside and and not have people try to rape me like Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you're wearing it's the sick person that wants to do something about that and so like yeah yeah. it's like just how about we don't rape people how about that how about like instead of where finding all of these scarves and 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 clothes to put over someone how about we just act like respectable human beings and if and, someone acts and, contrary to that we punish the hell out of exactly. them exactly as and, a and deterrent my, and my thing is that like most of these religions if not all religion is is based supposed to be based in love supposed to be based in just you treat others how you want to be treated you living on the right side of the way but again we live in these misogynistic realms where it's like Men come first, and that mm-hmm. like that's not that's not love. I, I I understand. I know what a text might read that was a thousand years old, but listen, this ain't a thousand. Like, <sighs> it's just so tired. It's it's like it's like the the boys versus girls is like the most played out, oversold conflict of this race. It's just so it, like we just we have to evolve past the point where we consider one section of people 
lesser than. Like the women aren't property; they're human beings. It, it, it's and I, like we've made a ton of progress over here. Things have gotten way better from where they were. So I'm not going to you know, try to downplay that, but we still deal with like the little things here and there because it's just so ingrained in our heads from birth that men do this, women do this. And if you blur the lines at all, that's weird. That's, mm -mm, we don't like that. You, you need, we need to suppress that. It's just like, and then, and then, because I, I watched a, a couple of videos a few years ago about um, incels, which are people, people that don't know, those are, men that identify is involuntarily celibate, meaning that they mm. basically can't find anyone to love them because they suck as human beings. That's basically what it is. Um, and a lot of them just keep parroting this same viewpoint that the, the reason why the world is in the state that it is in is because women have too much independence. If they would just, if they would just let men, you know, be the providers, go out and, you know, be the breadwinner is all this, that, and the third, and like focus on keeping the home, raising the kids, whatever the hell, then the world would be so much more organized. There would be less suffering. It just, it just is the natural order of things. And I'm like, no, the reason why the world is in chaos is because y'all keep trying to force people to do things they don't want to do. And they're upset about it. And then we are fighting. If people would just let people be people and respect one another, that's peace, not subjugation. <laughs> like I, it is the most it's psychotic thing that I that I that I listen to, and it's just. But that's how people feel. And then when you mix in religion, and you, then you use the higher cosmos as justifications for that kind of practice. It's like you're you're, you're just already you're too far gone. You're too far gone. There really is no other option other than fighting against that and protesting and violence. And that's what you're seeing. And it just it's horrible. It just I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but the women and protesters of Iran, we at the Purple Pants Podcast support and are with you and, and stand with you um, and keeping the topics rolling. Now, I don't know how good of a segue this is, but Kanye West. Um, oh, no, oh, no. He, well, listen, he, you don't got the answers, <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> you don't got the answers. How, Bryce? <laughs> How? Well, actually, <laughs> Kanye might have admitted that Sway had the answers almost a decade ago. Now, let's just like, yes, like now that's the crazy part. Now, the fact, first of all, I'm still using that meme and I'm still saying how Sway, how. But, you know, I guess Kanye he was so had, enraged. Oh my he God. was. It was like so crazy. And like I had to rewatch that, that whole interview. Oh, yes. You and, he wouldn't even look at him. You oh, ain't got to answer Sway. How Sway. But you, you gotta, you have to like rewind it just 30 seconds when Sway was just like, well, Kanye, why don't you just do it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like he just went off. But in for whatever reason, Kanye is doing this. I don't know if it's like apology tour or, or just saying that like, I am, I have my ish together right now, but he is currently doing several interviews. One interview that caught a lot of media attention was with Good Morning America, where he talked about his apology to Kim Kardashian for his treatment of her, uh, taking their co-parenting issues to the internet, and just all of that ish that we were dealing with him prior uh, for the last couple of months. Also, you know, Kanye is severing ties with Gap and severing ties with Adidas. He feels like Adidas is using his, I don't know what the word is, but his Yeezy likeness uh, producing and creating and selling them without his permission. And, you know, it's an interesting thing because a lot of artists and a lot of like black artists are standing behind Kanye in this because it's like as if Adidas can he can create something with Adidas that has always been collaborative. It's always been Ye and Adidas. It's never been just like Adidas. And now it's it seems that Ye, uh, Who's and Ye, Ye I, I was about to say Ye is Kanye, uh, but he goes by Ye. Um, Who's now, Ye? Is it Ye? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. On the Purple Pants podcast, is Ye? <laughs> Ye. Okay, Jesus. Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> Aman, it's not funny. Aman, listen, Aman. Yee! Aman. Ye don't, ye don't got the answers. Yeah, well, ye definitely did have the answers. And ye didn't have How the answers. How ye? Anyway. How <laughs> ye? <laughs> anyway. Kanye to the... <laughs> Kanye West, I'm just going to say that now since it's a key, key, caca. But no, Kanye West, like, you know, he's been at a, a disagreement with Adidas. They haven't been able to, you know... 
come to, I don't know if it's a contractual a disagreement. However, Adidas said, well, listen, while you over here doing that, we pushing out Yeezys. And Kanye is so upset by that and also by Gap. There, He did a collaboration with Gap. Now, I don't necessarily know what the issue with Gap was. I know that a part of some of the issue was that, like, he wanted to, like, have his clothes in trash bags on the ground. That was, like, $300. And first of all, like, no shade, but who still were Gap? Like that. Like, I mean, I like the Gap, but I don't like, you know. But anyway, so he's at war with all of these people and, like, the interview in Good Morning America was like, well, what are you going to do about this? And Kanye was like, well, I'm going to level up. I'm going to get more lawyers. Uh, I'm going to get better lawyers because I want to make this precedent that these major companies like Adidas, like Gap, like all these other, like, think about how many other basketball players have made shoes or how many other people they have collaborated with. And then you mm -hmm. stop to think like, well, what actually is the breakdown of that? Like how much money is Allen Iverson getting from those AIs with Reebok, this yeah. and that. And here is Kanye, who is not a basketball star coming to Adidas, making this hugely successful brand of sneakers that people love to hate but people <laughs> Wendell got a pair like you know people love mm -hmm. to hate but so many people have this pair of sneakers and it's almost like as <laughs> if Adidas is being like listen we're done with you goodbye and so there is such a huge point to this and so a lot of people are getting behind Kanye however it like makes it hard when Kanye just be out here kanye and doing all of, like, the ish yep. that he's doing, which is why I feel like he's on this apology tour. But on the Good Morning America interview, the lady asked, because when you rewind, because now Kanye is saying he is looking to fight this battle, battle to then take the Yeezys and sell them on his own. And then when you rewind a decade ago... Uh. When he was getting in business with Adidas, Sway asked him, why do you even need Adidas? Why can't you create them on your own? And that is when Kanye said, why, Sway? Why? Like, how, Sway? How you don't way? got the answers. Yes. You don't got the answers. Well, it looked like, it looked like he did have the answers. And that could be a lesson for all of us in the sense of, there are so many times that people tell us things that, like, we need to do. Uh, and, again, I'm just personally thinking of, like, Wendell right now who has been in my ear about something. And, again, like, this uh, ultimately applies to this. Is like, is it in my ear for something? And I'm just like, how, Wendell? How? You don't mm -hmm. got the answers. And it's like, sometimes you have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in the process. Um, what is it? Our deepest fear. Mm. It's not that we are inadequate, mm. but that we are more powerful beyond measure. Mm. And I, I think that I think that uh, Kanye definitely does have a point here because I remember I, and I don't really pay attention to Kanye's fashion. I don't be, I don't. I, if I like a pair of shoes, I'll buy them. I bought a pair of Adidas maybe like three years ago or so, and I got on the subway, I got on the Market Frankfurt line, okay. and I had like two or three people be like, "Are those the new Yeezys?" And I was like, "No, I think they're Yeezys Adidas." So Adidas is definitely saying, "Ooh." People really like this. Let's replicate this in a different kind of way and just sell it. So he's definitely got a point. He's he's got a point. It's just, you know, he gets in his own way and goes off about being the William Shakespeare of our generation and being the most influential artist of our generation and all this. And it just it turns a lot of people off. And he just has a, you know, I mean, we we know that Kanye isn't particularly always well. Right. I'll just say that. And so in I think he is in the most he's the most in his way when he is not well and he is not getting treated for not being well. Um, but I think that when he does have these moments of lucidity, it's one for one thing, it's always refreshing to hear that because I feel like we get we get two of them like we get twice a year where we're with Kanye is having an interview and we're like, oh, that was very that was very well stated, Kanye. Very good for you. You apologizing, that's great. I just wish that we had less and less of these. I just wish that there was more of the approach that he has now as opposed to house way. Right. No, it was extremely iconic. I I was the biggest Kanye fan, like ever. I, I went to his concerts and everything. And then over the years, I became like a big Kanye hater uh, just in seeing his antics and things like that. Regarding the, the house way interview, and I'm also a big proponent of ownership and, and doing your thing and empowering those around you and all of that. Yeah. 
when it came to this conversation a decade ago, before he was a multi-billionaire, mm-hmm. I think that Kanye was right in that he didn't have the resources to build such an infrastructure. I do think yeah. he was right back then. Like Sway's like, hey, do it on your own. Kanye's like, houseway, I just am, I just blew $13 million trying this on my own. Sway's like, well, I did it before I, not on that level, I did it with a, however many hundred thousands. And Kanye's like, I, yeah. I don't have the infrastructure. And similar to like, I, I compare it to like an, uh, a music artist signing to a major label that can get the word out for them. Now, now right. they're on a bigger scale, but their contract might suck. In this case, yeah. I thought back then Kanye was, they were using each other. Kanye was using Adidas to, to kind of be that vehicle for him back then. And previously he did that with Nike. Nike screwed him. Uh, they didn't give him the contract he wanted. He comes to Adidas. He's making these awesome sneakers and everything. They're doing well. At this point, their contracts are not where he wants it or they're not doing things on their end. So he's b- breaking ties with them. He's breaking ties with Gap for whatever reason. And now he's a 10 billionaire. Mm-hmm. With that kind of money, you can build whatever infrastructure you want, I think, to put these out on your on your own. So mm-hmm. now it's like, all right, Sway was right in that ownership and doing it on your your own Mm -hmm. is the way that you can be able to call such shots at that time i don't i don't think he was financially able to but now it's like kanye has that that f you money right now he can literally do what he wants right and i think and it probably wasn't even that easy to do like it probably like to your point like it's i'm sure there's probably like lots of red tape that you would have to go through like being a first you know, like, the, like the, wanting to get into the business of shoes. I'm sure like Adidas and Nike, they have like these companies are so huge and they're all over the place. Like, I'm sure that they have like reserved areas of resources and like where to get the shoes, like who the yeah. shoes are going to be coming from. Because we know that they're being made in they got the equation and it's... stuff. Right. So. Yeah. It's kind of hard to set all that up yourself. And I feel like maybe if yeah, I feel like that's true. And then there's also the point like of what Sway is trying to make. It's like, well, you can you don't have to be that big yet. Like you have to start somewhere like start get grassroots. Grassroots are always like the bedrock of like any big, you know, uh, manufacturing company. You'd always start small and then you blow it up. So maybe if he had like tried to go that route first which is kind of what he did with adidas like you know now you're at where you are now with all this yeah. money so go ahead and do it because ain't nobody gonna boycott adidas Connie. i'm sorry like it's it's, it's not gonna happen because you know also know who has a partnership with adidas ivy park <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> who's bigger as far as uh like market share selling products I mean, the Beyonce saying, oh, I have no idea. I have well, no I'm idea. sure it's probably Kanye, uh, but Ivy Park isn't really that big. I think Beyonce kind of keeps it at a realm of Ivy Park is mm-hmm. hugely successful, but like I don't know or believe that it's marketed to be as big as the Yeezys. It's okay. very like it's very like collectors, right? Items. Uh, okay. It's very like you know art house type of you know limited edition, right? Yep. You blink and you miss it type stuff. So, yeah. So now, now Kanye is going on this. You said you call it an apology tour, and I, well, in seeing him say like, I think I wrote down the quote. It was like, it's just just something to like, you know what? Sway had the answer or something like right. that. <laughs> that was funny and silly to watch. It was cool to see Kanye humble himself and admit that. Mm-hmm. And that's the side of Con- that's the side of Kanye that I think could sell a lot more than the no for sure you know that that you know what he was right and don't get me wrong i think where a lot of people i think the issue with kanye is in my opinion is that you go on these tirades you go on these like bizarre rants and you do these weird things and then yet in uh an issue like this where you're actually a thousand percent right like you know people are then like Oh, no, it's just Kanye. He just like, no, actually, they're like two different things. Like, you know, let's just be clear. But I I feel like if you if you were more Beyonce in this realm where we didn't know nothing about your personal life and we didn't know anything about like, you know what I mean? It's just like I think you would have an easier 
uh, battle in the core of public opinion, although the core of public opinion doesn't matter, it really does matter um, mm -hmm. to some degree because, you know, if he ever wanted to partner with another company before, like, again, I'm sure a company will be like, I don't know if we would ever want to work with you <laughs> because we didn't see Nike. We didn't see Gap. We didn't see like we see how you are with your the mother of your children when you don't get your way. Yeah. And so that's also kind of like uh, what if what if Adidas is let, let me be window and devil's advocate. What if Adidas <laughs> is well within their contract? right to produce these and it's just Kanye being like you know what I mean and it's like because the way that you act at times it's hard for us to want to rally around this black man who has done amazing things and we can never take that away from him uh but you sometimes like take away from your own greatness in how that you act yeah I also think that sometimes when these celebrities get so big like they lose perspective it's like at the end of the day, like, of course, like, I, I, I'm, I, of course, we always want to see black people succeed. Like, I'm never not going to want to see that. But at the same time, I'm like, Kanye, you've been rich for a very long time. Um, and sometimes, like, some these are rich people problems. And I <laughs> am like, but, ah. but to, to that, I say, I want more black people to have these type of rich people problems. Because that, <laughs> of course, of course. I just, I, I sometimes I just wish that. Sometimes I feel like that awareness is lacking. I think that they expect uh, black people to just automatically want to be concerned and rally into some of these business dealings. And it's right. like half the time, most of us don't even know what any of that really entails. And second of all, I am trying to put food on my table oh, right okay. now. And I don't really well, know if I care about your shoes. Okay. I just... You know, that costs five hundred dollars that people can't afford, but they still buying them. Exactly, like, we, we like about that. yeah, mm -hmm. like if yeah, exactly. Like in on, on top of that, your stuff is so damn expensive. It's like who? Huh, I don't know. On top of that, he wore a "Make America Great Again" hat and met with Donald mm -hmm. Trump. Like the things that the things that we how, how can we forget about this? Yeah, what I I I think about that moment, and then I think about what happened after that, and I'm like, man. He started talking that billionaire talk within the last couple of years. Yeah. So his, I don't know what that meeting was about, but, mm -hmm. or what strings were pulled or something, but I feel like he became a billionaire sometime after that. Mm -hmm. And these people, and like, I, I don't, I don't like getting too political or something like that. I just, I try to think about my Republican friends and their reasons for voting that way and i'm like man sometimes they strictly voted with their pockets exactly and i think about these super wealthy people and like like you those billionaire problems are something that i probably or i can't even fathom that and the things mm -hmm. that he has to go through or the things that he has to say or not say i don't know i just yeah it's just it's a whole different realm your life is just so much you're just, you're not, it's not normal. It's not normal. Like being that rich is not normal. There are, to own that much money, that much of the world's money is is a lot. And I feel like once you're up there, it takes a very like strong person of like such great moral character to have that not affect you. I just don't understand how. Grounded. I, I just don't think that it, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. I. I don't know. I. I mean, I wonder how Rihanna deals with it because I mean, she's up mm. there now too, and you know, she, she seems to be a billionaire in peace for the most part. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just. I, it's just. A, it's a whole nother world. A whole new world. Uh, oh, oh, for you oh. and me. Look at Wendell about to sing the words. <laughs> <laughs> A new fantastic some thump point of view. <laughs> no one to tell us no. Yes. Or where to go. Yes. Uh, or <laughs> say we're only dream. Is that it? That's, that's it. it. Uh, yes. That's it. it. I don't know. Now that's it. Way. Now listen, I uh, I want to go into a whole new world, oh, baby. Oh, baby, <laughs> baby. Nia Long's fiance, oh. longtime lover. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to say Ime it. Adoka. Ime. Okay. He mm -hmm. is the head coach of the Celtics. He's just been there a year. He just brought the Celtics to the playoffs, which they to haven't the finals. Done, to the finals. 
I mean, mind you, he's not a bad looking brother in my opinion, but also it's Nia Efton Long. Mm. Now reports then came out that mm. the, when I say the tea has been bubbling, mm. um, reports came out that Ime, yeah, Ime uh, had been in a consensual relationship with a Boston Celtic employee. Mm. And you know it is against the 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 franchise policy, and that the the Boston Celtics are looking to you know have some type of punishment. And just that alone came out, and baby, the internet's the twitters went crazy because if you don't know who Nia Long is, Nia Long is a beloved figure in the black community, especially in I would say like my generation the generation after like you know like Nia Long has just been that girl mm -hmm. she, she does not age she is beautiful I can remember like growing up and like I don't even know why but like my brothers had like a Nia Long poster on their wall um she's just an iconic figure she's just th the best man Friday like the her mm -hmm. her list love of Jones things, love Jones her list of it's just the end. And that's like, it's just Nia Long. Like, mm -hmm. who does not love Nia Long? Like, she just is, we love her. And so for her to have recently got engaged, you know, she has a 10-year son with this man. She just recently moved to Boston. Mm -hmm. And so for this Boston, to come out. Crusty now, ass Boston. Okay, Ugh. well, I, I like Boston. I feel like Boston is Philadelphia's like cousin city. There's so many similarities to mm. Boston and Philadelphia. The trashy cousin. Oh my God. I love Boston. Love y'all. <laughs> it's on Philadelphia's dad's side of mine. Is that what you're saying? It's on, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and so it, it but then there are so now we know Boston has suspended him. For a year or a whole season. Some people like Matt Barnes have come out and said, like, wait a minute, a whole year? Like, that's kind of crazy when you had some head coaches stealing money from the franchise and they are, I, I'm just, you know. Matt Barnes walked his statement back. Well, he walked his statement back. So, however, now that. We are the still, facts aren't really out there in the, the public. The facts aren't really out there enough. And so we don't mm -hmm. know enough. So it's hard for us to give us our opinion. That's why I'm giving the timeline of when this first came out. We saying what's going on. Then very, at first it was consensual. Now they saying it wasn't consensual. Mm. Now, some, some reports are saying it was. Some reports are saying it wasn't. Some reports are saying, first of all, also, what I don't love about this is that I feel like this is ruining people's like careers in this. I didn't I didn't read four different women's names who would could possibly be on the Celtics squad. Mm. This is okay. Like, this is like that time when uh the whole Rachel Roy thing happened with Beyonce and everybody was like getting the wrong Rachel. Every, and, right. Yeah. And I've also read early this morning that you know the the employee was a one of their main roles was to schedule his travel and along with scheduling his travel was scheduling Nia Long's travel as well. Spicy. Yeah. Spicy. Then <laughs> early yesterday, Nia Long had came out with a statement. She had stayed quiet. Uh, she just made a general statement saying that like she appreciates the outpouring in love from her fans and supporters. But at, uh, and this, this watch is love Nia Long. And she said, but at the core of her, she is a mother first, and her first responsibility is to her child, and she would uh, respect privacy during this time as she navigates this. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Y'all takes. Now, I, I, I'm dying to hear Wendell take, because this, like, what you got to say? What, like, what are your thoughts? My first, my thir first thought is all the facts aren't out there, so yes. we're, we're making a lot of assumptions. Yes. What I did, what I did here was that back in June or July, mm -hmm. It was um, made apparent, and Ime knew that back then, and didn't say anything, say anything. To Nia until until he just let it come out. Secondly, so she moved to Boston. Yeah, uh, uh, based on my research, it was something consensual. But then, at some point after that, there were maybe inappropriate comments made that that 
an unwanted comments or something that was mm-hmm. made that kind of she's a little too far now. You know mm-hmm. what? I'm gonna say something, and once she said something, boom! Now there's an investigation, and now I guess maybe more things came out. Again, we don't know a lot, but they they were in a decade long relationship. They have a child together. She's moving up there. You are the head coach of the team that almost won the NBA finals in your first year as head coach. Mm. And you're doing this with a mm. staffer. Like, mm. yeah, I, 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 that's crazy. Way to throw away a bag. That's crazy. Child, throw, first of all, throw away a bag. This is why I feel like I never want to be in a relationship. If this can happen to Nia, Nia Long, Long Nobody's safe. Nobody. Nobody's safe in these streets. Nobody is safe. Like, child, I like, I just, I, mm, that, and I know that, like, don't get me wrong. I know the, the bigger story is the Celtics, the stat, like, but for me, it's Nia Long. Like, if Nia Long, like, child, I, mm. that's why I just want somebody to text me back. Just text, like, let's just, like, let's just text back and forth. That's all I want. Mm. And to be like, it's, yeah, now you, now you suspended. Who knows what's going to happen with your wife? Who knows what Beyonce, you're Beyonce, they're not even married. Or- they should also tell us something. It's been 10 years. Why they not married? But anyway, I digress. Mm-hmm. And he did this in the workplace. And the workplace. How messy. Yeah. Like, yeah, that, yeah. I think you're probably right, though, Wendell. I think it probably was something where it was, and I'm, I'm assuming, but I think it was probably something where it was like a little bit of a flirtation that turned into something more. Um, and then maybe at some point it could have been like one of those situations where this female staffer was like, well, I kind of don't feel comfortable doing this anymore. This feels kind of wrong to do this. So either we're going to do this, do this, and meaning you're going to not be with me anymore, Mm -hmm. or I'm just not going to engage with this with you anymore, which probably pissed him off because he's like, why can't I have my cake and eat it too? Mm -hmm. And then it turned into like, okay, well now since you're going to do this, then I'm definitely going to speak up about it now so it's the whole thing is just horrible like i, I hope that that child is okay because like now right. you gotta now like all everybody's gonna be in your business yeah. everybody's gonna have an opinion about it it's just like i it just sucks like hey, i just again the point of the story for me is Neil Long. can you imagine right. like in in this like you just moved to Boston, you decorate in this house, you getting your son's life together. Wendell just went on a saga of a year and a half to get a couch delivered. You know, can you imagine what she doing trying to like buy like I I and she was all over the TV screen at the mm-hmm. at the playoff games. Like, oh my god, that's Neil Long on TV. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. he played her, and again, that's. First of all, we will keep uh, we will keep you in the loop as more information uh, becomes available to this in the casualty. So you can definitely uh, report back to listen here. But I mean, ultimately, first of all, we need to figure out what happened with that staffer and whether what needs to happen with that. And then also it's like, you know, then Nia has to make a decision. Um And it's her decision and whether she decides to stay or leave him. We got to respect that. And um mm-hmm. And that's her decision. Cause I'm just you saying, know, ain't nobody gonna be. I mean, you don't gotta worry about divorce. You ain't married. Okay, I'm just, well, I'm just saying. Listen, like, you know, Amon, mm-hmm. what do you think is gonna happen? She leaving him. Ah, uh, uh, you never know. She leaving him. She could have knew. Think, she could have knew. I, I'm not. I'm not. Just. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she could have known. Yeah. She could have maybe. I would say probably not though, based off of her statement, because she was just like, "This is an incredibly difficult time." Yeah. So like, I feel like. Well, I mean, it's a difficult if you knew or not. Now it's all in like you know the headlines. Mm, yeah, I guess that's true, but I mean, I thought I thought the reports were saying that she was blindsided, or is that just something that media reports is that reporting uh, reports, allegedly? Uh, right. I mean, uh, uh, like uh, being engaged since that. How many years has it been? Eight years. That's a long time. 2015 to now. That's a that's a long time to not get married, and it's not like they're not going to be any less busy to just have the wedding. It's not like they don't have the money to just have the wedding. So you have to wonder what was the holdup? Was there some suspicion? Were they working through things? I would probably say if this was like a seven year long engagement to see how things were going to play out, this probably is your answer. So maybe 
but she I, leaves, I don't know. For me, I just feel like maybe she's for the sun. I don't I, know. But seven years is a long time, and long Nia time. is a woman of a certain age, and I'm not saying that to say anything about that, but I also feel like, child, I, I give you seven years of my bet. Like, I, I don't know. I think that they're, I just. It's, it's a hard, lot. especially it's when there's kids involved. Yeah, like. and you're a public figure, and you just like, yeah, it, it's a lot. But so, Nia, girl, we praying for you. I, I hope that whatever happens, uh, we will keep you. Uh, in the loop. Now, we are on to our final topic of the casual tea this week. And Aman, we are down to our final three. We are recording on Sunday. Uh, so finale day. I, finale wow. day. So we will have a new winner of Big Brother. Aman, can you just give us the, the tea as to where we are at? And also, can you give us a prediction so that when people listen to this on Tuesday, they can say, Aman was right, Aman was wrong. <laughs> like, what, like, what's the tea? Uh, I don't even know where we left off. I would just say, look, we're at the final three. Um... And the biggest story of the hour is, is Taylor Hale going to be the first Black woman to win um, a regular season of North American Big Brother? Um, it's Taylor, Monty, and Turner in the end right now. Uh, Turner has won part one of the final HOH. Monty won part two of the final HOH, meaning Taylor, unfortunately, has to rely on one of them bringing her to the final two. At this point in time, Turner is you know loyal to monty if he wins part three he's going to cut taylor and bring monty to the end monty however will bring taylor even after all of the ups and down with their relationship he has talked so much trash about taylor in the beginning kind of leveled off with it towards the middle and sort of like became a little friendlier with her but still had his moments then they did the unexpected and like hooked up in the house multiple times we're thinking it's going to be like some crazy ass like enemies to lover story and then some dumbass incident about like taking headphones and calling her cold again and it, it, it deteriorated once more but even through all of that effery he is still planning on taking her to the end turner the, the last part of the hoh competition is usually um a quiz like it's something to do with the season whether it's days or whatever the hell Turner really has not been studying that much. Monty, on the other hand, has been studying. So I expect, unless there is some type of major fluke or they change the format of the competitions, turn um, Monty is probably going to win that. Take Taylor to the end. Taylor is going to win this game. <laughs> Taylor is going to win. I, I expect that the four girls will probably vote for her. And then I expect that Michael will probably also vote for her. That's five. That's all you need in a jury of nine. Taylor will be the first black woman to win Big Brother after a hellish mm. season. So much stuff that she has gone through. It is the ultimate Cinderella story. One always does have to question why, though. Why did she have to go through all of this BS, all of this bullying, all of this nastiness towards her just to get to the end? But she still made it against all odds her ass was supposed to be gone night one and the only reason she stayed was because the other girl that was the ringleader in the anti-taylorness of it all mm. got her ass they say that she self-evicted they pulled her ass from the show they pulled her out um because she was um but yeah so taylor's gonna win i think i hope unless turner wins and cuts taylor that's it so there's no there's no chance that Monty, in knowing that Taylor will beat him, pull brings who is the other guy? Tail um, Turner. He has not told Turner at all. Like he like he ever since they got to final three last Thursday, um, Turner has repeatedly said, "Oh, yo, you know, you know, us final two, bro," and he's never repeated it back. He has on the other end had conversations about uh with Taylor about Turner. One that he had as recently as la last night, he even got a little emotional about the fact that he was going to have to cut Turner. Mm -hmm. So wow. unless he is some psychotic ass liar, which I guess is not out of the realm of possibility, <laughs> he is going to take Taylor. He has said already that he, you know, he he thinks that he's going to beat her. He thinks that his story and his uh... game is better. And strategically, he has played a stronger game, but with a story like Taylor's. No. Mm -mm. Another question. What's up? Can he beat 
the other the other guy. Can he beat the other Can guy? Can he beat Turner? Turner. I think so. I think it, it leads towards Monty taking that one. I still think that there is a roundabout chance that Turner could mm-hmm. snatch some votes away too. Um, but I think it's much more likely that he, that Monty probably takes it. Turner, for you know, as much as his game has sort of been like doing what other people tell him to do, he can take credit for getting out the number one comp beast, which was Michael, who tied Janelle's record for most comps won in a season. Wow. Um, he also took out Kyle, who was like the premier uh, racist of the season, oh, yeah. um, and he the was uh, he was the HOH that uh, flipped the script and got rid of Amira when Taylor was supposed to be the target that week as well and changed the entire progression of the game. So he has three pivotal HOHs to his name. But on the other end, a lot of people can say, well, was that really him or did they did he get pressured into doing it? So I think it really just comes down to whether or not he's able to articulate his game in the final jury questioning and if he can then maybe he can snatch the win the victory from from monty but i'm i'm trying to get in monty's head to where all right i should go with the person that i have the best chance at beating Mm -hmm. and he thinks that that person is taylor yeah it's his arrogance he thinks he has this warped perspective that people see Taylor the same way that he does. Like, uh, people are still going to think, oh, well, you know, she had a horrible social game. She's cold. She's this. She's that. Like, she doesn't, she does. She lacks self-awareness. And it's like, no, that's you, buddy. <laughs> that's is there is you. there any part of that, Amon, where he knows all of the trash that he has talked about her and could have foresight into how people outside of the house might be I thinking I think there's a little him? bit of that as well. I, I think that there is, I mean, because he, I mean, he actively said, he would be fine with losing to a black woman. Um, he said that that's sort of like something that's important to him. And I don't mm. think that he's wrong. I don't think that he's dishonest and saying, I think that mm. that is true. But I also think that there is a little bit of, let me not be trash all the way. Right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah, I think, I still think that he ultimately believes that there is a stronger chance that he will win. And to his credit, he does have votes that probably will just never go to Taylor. Kyle is probably going to vote for him because Kyle did him dirty and Kyle is going to want to redeem himself and vote for Monty to win. Terrence has some weird hatred for Taylor, which his ass is going to get dragged for when he gets out of the house. He's going to vote for Monty. Um, Turner, even though Monty is probably going to cut him, probably will still vote for Monty. So there, there's a three votes right there that he thinks that he has locked all the way. All he needs is two more. It's just that I really feel like the girls are not going to go for it, buddy. I think mm. they're going to give it to Taylor, especially if she can be the first black woman to win. So mm. it's going to be, it's very interesting because it's really, nothing really is set in stone. It really, this finale is going to be like, I, all I can say is if Turner wins at HOH and then cuts Taylor, mm. it's, it's it, or if Monty oh. wins at HOH and cuts oh. Taylor after all of that. I really Listen. don't. I'm not one to be like, you know, I, I really don't. I shy away from people like sending hate and stuff to people when they get out of the house. Like, that's really not my shtick. Like, I think that we should hold people accountable. But I have to say, if he does that, it's going to be bad for him. Like, it's especially after he was on the feed talking about how he wants to be an influencer. He really wants to take his personal fitness stuff to like the next level. I'm like, oh. Well, mm. make the right choice then, buddy, because <laughs> you already have a lot of stuff against you right now. So, woo. Can yeah, I play I don't know, advocate? Oh, my God. What, Wendell? What? <laughs> now, here's my question to you. Say Taylor and um, Monty are sitting at the end. And like you said, uh, Monty's game might have been such that mm-hmm. his game speaks a better game than Taylor's game. Mm-hmm. And you said, I can't see these women – this particular block of women voting for him, especially because Taylor could be the first black female winner. Mm -hmm. Is it like, all right, we're voting for her because she could be the first black female winner Mm -hmm. in light of him playing a better game. I think, well, I I think that it's also that that's one piece of the puzzle, but I also think that just her story, the way that she was able to outlast every single one of the people that wanted her out of the game, mm-hmm. and the fact that she's very aware of that, and she did it with grace, she did it with kindness, she was never rude to anybody. I just think that sometimes 
and let's be and let's be clear, Monty played a strategically sounder game, but his game wasn't that like none of these players were good. So yeah. I think I think and I said this on um the round table last week, I think every season has a different metric. Every jury is different. Does a strategic game matter for Big Brother 24? There's a chance that it might not because it's not like Monty's game was some next level stuff. It really wasn't. It was it was better than Taylor's, but not by much. So I think that there's a I think it comes down to who has the better relationships. And I don't know if Monty has strong enough relationships with a lot of these people left in the jury where they're going to feel compelled to vote for him. Michael will vote for Taylor because they were in an alliance together. Brittany will vote for Taylor because they were in an alliance together. Alyssa already told Taylor that if she's sitting in the final two, then she has her votes. Like it's, it, it comes down to who has the better jury management. And I don't think that Monty does. So it what? sounds like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It mm-hmm. sounds like what you're saying is he did play a better game, but her path was a lot more difficult than his path. Mm-hmm. Very so, much so. Although his his resume might say X Y Z for her to navigate to get there, I mean she has a very compelling argument. Yeah, yep. yeah, I hear you. So uh, we will have to see. One thing is for certain. Two things are for sure. I have my like notifications on Amon's tweets turned <laughs> on because I want to follow him throughout the night. Listen, I might not watch the show, but I will definitely be staying covered on well your tweets and uh Derek Frazier's tweets are like my big brother people that I go to to see light to see what's going on in the streets. I am so happy that we were able to get a casual tea going this week because y'all know me and Amon be taking hiatus. It's because of a mind, not me. Oh we my god! Are, at, you say that as you two are like on tour, traveling the world and crap. Like, mm-hmm, but yo, listen, I always got time me. for the casual tea with a mind and B, and I'm always so grateful uh, for you to lend your your your, your tea points here. But before we go, a mind, what are you got working on this week? Where can the people follow you at? What 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 what's the tea? Break it down. I'm kind of like I'm kind of on a break now. Like once oh. Big Brother ends, I am I'm I'm we not of, reading Harry Potter. I am not reading Harry Potter. I have um uh, I'll explain more about that some other time. But it's um yeah, I'm sort of just uh taking a little bit of a breather. I do have some podcast podcasting planned for the near future. Um, outside of like the Big Brother Survivor space, but uh, yeah, right now I'm kind of just enjoying the transition into fall, and wow. uh, yeah, so you can just you can just always follow me everywhere to Mon Adwin if you just want to check out my socials. Yes, we do. And uh, Wendy, what you got lined up? Not too much. We're going to Houston um, mm. for Laurel Johnson's wedding, so oh. it'll be a nice little Wen Dom Laurel reunion down there, hey. and then the following week. Bryson Wen presents going to the H Town, and we're gonna throw our party. And then, you know, obviously, we got many days Philly, DC, Boston, the finale in LA. We got a lot going on, and I'm excited for it. Yes, I hopefully we'll see Aman in Philadelphia. You know, Aman is always makes a great appearance. Uh, <laughs> so yes, this was exciting. Please let us know in the comments. Go on YouTube, like this video, subscribe, get in the comments. Uh, let us know what you thought. We want to hear your opinions on some of the topics that we talked about. But listen, guys, this has been your <clears throat> oh. casual casual. It's the purple pants, it's the purple pants, it's the purple pants podcast. You better get your headphones and listen up quick. Ooh. It's the purple pants podcast. You better listen in public, might make your stomach hurt. Ooh. It's the purple pants podcast. You trying to unwind, you better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You trying to get your snack? You better hurry right back, though. It's the Purple Pants. It's the Purple Pants.